the opening scene, we see a family sitting in their garden, enjoying the warmth of the sun. Bill, the father, and his second wife, Kim, watch over their children, Brad and Don, who are playing in a mini water tub. Bill tells his son not to bother his sister, but the little boy rudely replies that she is not his sister. In reality, they're step-siblings. As the kids play, Brad abruptly brings out his private part, and then asks Don to show hers. Moments later, Brad cries out in pain as his finger appears to have a cut. Seeing this, the parents chastise Don, believing that she bit him. And boy, if, well, they're gonna find out, you know. The scene then cuts to several years later, and we see Don is now a grown-up college student. She is actively involved with a Christian abstinence group named The Promise. The main objective of the group is to promote the idea of waiting for the right life partner before engaging in intimate relationships. Don asserts that intimacy before marriage makes the person impure. During one of her speeches, Don's attention is caught by a guy named Toby, whom she finds appealing. Later on, her friends introduce her to Toby, who turns out to be another member of the abstinence group. The two appear to be instantly drawn to each other, but they don't express their feelings for now. I give it two days before they bail on the promise. The next day, Don rides her bicycle to school. While walking inside, she faces bullying from fellow students due to her advocacy for abstinence. Look at her. She's not a skank. Loser. We're such skanks. Ryan, who has a crush on her, attempts to approach her, but the bullies intervene and push him away. Later in the class, the students are taught about human reproductive organs. Since the school is conservative, the diagram of female reproductive organs is covered by a sticker. Seeing this, Ryan asks for its reason, but the teacher simply tries to brush it off, saying that it is the school's rule. When the student is unconvinced, Don asserts that women are different from men, as they are born with a sense of modesty. Hearing this, the entire class makes fun of her, except for Toby, who stands up for her. At home, Don's mother has been unwell for a while now, and her father is taking care of her. On the other hand, her stepbrother Brad is now a free-spirited man who often brings his girlfriend Melanie home to make out. Brad also enjoys teasing Don, consistently startling her for his own amusement. One day after school, Don and her three group friends decide to attend a movie. Upon their arrival, they realize that the movie they had initially planned to watch holds an R rating. As a result, the group ends up watching a film intended for kids. For the R-rated one, they can just catch the recap. Whoa, self plug During this, the other two friends begin making out, leading to Toby and Don feeling uncomfortable. They simply avoid eye contact and continue watching the movie. Once the show is over, the four friends head to a lake that consists of a cave. It is a known spot for where couples spend their private time together. While the two friends opt for a swim, Don and Toby settle by the shore for a conversation. During their chat, Don admits that she is a virgin, whereas Toby discloses that he has had an intercourse more than a year ago. <laughs> Un intercourse? <laughs> and now feels guilty for it. Later that night, Don has fantasies about marrying Toby and starts touching herself. But right then, she has a vision of a horrifying creature, which interrupts her feelings. The next morning, Don arrives at school late, but she does not pay any attention to Toby. Later on, she calls him from the locker room and expresses her concern about her attraction towards him. She then shares her decision to not see him for the time being, as she doesn't want to succumb to seduction. Toby understands her point. I get it. I'm friggin' hot. And obliges as well. In the evening, Don returns home, only to overhear an argument between Brad and his girlfriend. Shortly after Melanie departs, Don goes to her stepbrother's room to talk to him. She wishes to resolve all the gaps between them and live like actual brother and sister. However, Brad rudely makes fun of her, calling her an idiot. He even invites her to sleep with him, which disgusts Don, prompting her to walk away in anger. Following this, she heads towards the couple's lake and calls Toby, who arrives there in no time. The two jump into the lake and start kissing each other. They then swim to towards the cave, continuing their intimate moments. However, Toby's desires intensify, causing Don to feel uneasy. She tries to stop him, reminding him of their commitment to purity, but he is not ready to listen. As he becomes aggressive, a struggle ensues between them, with both of them pushing each other. Unfortunately, Don comes off worse from it, as she accidentally hits her head on the ground and gets knocked out. Seizing the opportunity, Toby forces himself upon her, but as soon as he does so, he screams in pain. Don also wakes up at the same time and sees blood all over his hands. To her horror, she also discovers that his organ has been bitten off. Should have stayed abstinent, ya butthole. In a state of panic, Toby falls into the water while Don flees the scene in terror. The next day, Don is assigned to deliver a short speech to a Christian abstinence group, but her ability to speak is notably hindered by the incident. Later, Ryan approaches her and strikes up a conversation, eventually offering her a ride home. Before parting ways, he proposes a date, seemingly eager to get his dick bitten off, which Don declines due to her emotional state. Later on, Don, unable to shake off the traumatic
traumatic incident, decides to return to the lake. As she swims towards the cave, she comes across a distressing sight. Insects swarming around Toby's or uh, We didn't- Oh, that's- <clears throat> Now that she considers herself as an impure person, she discards her purity ring. Upon returning home, she grapples with the event's details and wonders how it happened. Since she knows nothing about reproductive organs or how they look, she removes the sticker from her biology book and goes through it. To her surprise, she learns that her organ is actually deformed. Dawn then uses the internet to learn about her condition. After a few searches, she finally discovers that she suffers from vagina dentata, a condition where the vagina contains teeth. Teeth. Concerned, Dawn makes an appointment with a gynecologist named Dr. Godfrey. Given that this is her first visit to a gynecologist, Dr. Godfrey exploits her vulnerability and begins assaulting her in the guise of an examination. Are you kidding me? In the process, he reaches up inside of her without a glove, which results in her panicking. In her distress, her muscles react, resulting in her teeth biting off four fingers from his right hand. Dawn freaks out and runs away while the doctor screams, Vagina cantata! Yep, I just yelled that, and I got neighbors. While cycling home, several police vehicles pass by, and Dawn also notices someone driving Toby's car. Intrigued and puzzled, she heads to the couple lake to check the matter. Arriving there, she witnesses police divers taking out Toby's lifeless body from the water. This freaks Dawn out, and she starts blaming herself for his death. When she returns home, her problems only continue to mount. Her ill mother is lying on the ground, while Brad and Melanie are having coitus nearby. The f what is this movie? Dawn hurriedly calls 911 and rushes her mother to the hospital. Afterwards, she awakens on a hospital couch, and her father sends her home to have some rest. Upon reaching home, she hears another argument between Brad and his girlfriend. Overwhelmed and in need of solace, she goes to Ryan's place seeking help. She confides in him, explaining that she could turn herself into the police because she has almost killed two people. She also reveals about the teeth down there, but Ryan does not understand what she is saying. There's just a sticker down there, no? Believing that she is stressed, he allows her to take a relaxing hot tub a bath. Additionally, he offers her a pill, assuring her it will help her calm down. While Dawn is having a bath, Ryan transforms his room into a romantic setting with candles, and also readies a wine bottle for an enjoyable evening. A few moments later, Dawn comes out and searches for her clothes, intending to go to the police station. However, she feels lightheaded due to the pill Ryan had given her. Is everyone in this world a friggin' animal? Pointing out her weakened state, Ryan persuades her to rest for a while and postpone her visit to the police station until the next day. Day. Shortly after, he makes her lie down beside him and begins to touch her. This time, Don appears to be enjoying all of this. A confident Ryan then positions himself atop her, aiming to make love with her. At this point, Don is hesitant, fearing that her dentata might hurt him. Sensing her reservations, Ryan asks if she wants him to stop, but she responds, no. With this consent, the two of them end up getting intimate without her unique condition involved. This makes Don realize that when she is relaxed and is consenting to the coitus, her teeth remain inactive. On the other hand, a forensic expert finds a rare white structure in Toby's body. While it resembles a tooth from a shark or an eel, tests confirm it to be of human origin. Elsewhere, Dr. Godfrey undergoes a surgical procedure to reattach his severed fingers. The surgeons question him about how it happened, but he refuses to divulge any information. The following morning, Ryan and Don engage in intimate activity one more time. During the process, Ryan receives a call from one of his friends, boasting about a bet they made on whether he could score with Don. He also taunts her commitment to abstinence, claiming that it was never sacred. This infuriates Dawn, who then lets her teeth bite Ryan and leaves. With blood everywhere, Ryan freaks out and calls his mother for help. Oh, Bobby, her ho ho bit my pee pee. Later, on the same day, Dawn visits the hospital and receives the devastating news of her mother's passing. Meanwhile, at home, Bill comforts Brad regarding his reckless behavior, directly blaming him for Kim's demise. This causes the two to get into a physical fight, during which Brad's dog bites the old man on his neck. As he starts bleeding, Melanie rushes him to the hospital, where they also meet Don. Melanie apologizes to Don for her mother's death, and confesses how Brad told her to ignore her mother's cries for help earlier. After hearing all of this, Don becomes emboldened by her power, and goes back home to seek revenge. She puts on makeup and goes to seduce her stepbrother. Although reluctant at first, Brad gets on top of her and engages in the coitus. The next second, the teeth come out to play, severing his device 
device and releasing it to the ground. Overwhelmed with pain, Brad orders his dog to attack Don, but the cheeky beast instead proceeds to devour his severed my focal gall. Oh. Don then leaves the room and Brad presumably bleeds to death. In the next scene, we see Don cycle away from home in search of a new life. However, her bike tire sustains a puncture in the middle of the road, forcing her to hitchhike. A short while later, she gets a ride from an old man in his car. As they travel for several hours, Don falls asleep and wakes up only after nightfall. When the old man pulls over at a gas station, Don tries to exit the vehicle and leave. However, the old man, seemingly in a hurry to lose his, do his dick, locks the car doors and licks his lips, proposing an intimate favor before allowing her to go. Don initially hesitates, but she soon turns around with an evil smile, hinting at her intentions. I'm gonna bite it. I'm gonna bite it right off. I'm gonna, you come on over near me, I'm gonna bite it off. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.